Okay, we'll continue our discussion of examples and uh, we've done the standard normal distribution. We've looked at the forward, which is the distribution command examples, and we've looked at the backwards problem, which is the inverse command problems for the standard normal distribution, which means our uh, horizontal axis is the Z axis. Now I'll give you guys some examples for the non-standard case, which are the story problem cases. So with the standard ones, it's all find the probability that z is this, z is greater, z is less. Find the prob find the z score that gives you the bottom this area, top that area. So everything is in, but has been about z scores and areas and not a sort of a story problem. But now we're gonna work on story problems when we're talking about a non-standard distribution like IQs, defect rates. So it'll be just like a word problem here. But, and the command will just not have the S anymore. That's the same thing. So let's look at an example. So say, uh, I'll just pick an example from your PowerPoint. Let's say we are uh, looking for a uh, number of hours a light bulb can last. So the question is i have a manufacturing of halogen light bulbs uh, the manufacturers light bulbs they claim that their light bulbs on the average lasts about 900 hours so they're giving you the mu they have to because it's a non-standard they have to provide you with the mean and the standard deviation that they didn't for the standard case so they're telling you that their average lifespan of their light bulbs they manufacture is 900 hours with a standard deviation of 50 hours and they're asking you to, with that information, find the probability if I randomly selected the light bulb from the production line, that light bulb will last, um, say, at, at most 820 hours or, or, or find a probability that the, that the randomly selected light bulb will last less than 820 hours. So less than 820 hours. And that's what they're trying to figure out. In this case, less than or equal to doesn't really matter for the for the continuous case. It only matters for the discrete case. So here, if I'd say less than 820 or less than or equal to 820 would make a difference. For the, again, for the continuous case, it doesn't make a difference. Now, which is this case. Now, if I wanted to draw the structure here, and I just want you to see the drawing now, it's not going to be the standard normal distribution drawing, it's the non-standard, which means it's not the z-axis anymore, but it's the x-axis. So let me draw the setup here. So my horizontal axis now is not z anymore, it's x. And my vertical axis is still my p-axis. Everything is the same, you draw it the same, you don't draw it any different. It's just that x-axis is x-values, not z-values, which means the center is not zero anymore because it's only zero because it's a Z axis, it's an X axis. So the center is the mean, the mean here is 900. So the center is 900, not zero anymore. All right, so if that's 900, so that, and, and I'm asking you to find a probability that X is less than 820. Well, 820 will be to the left of 900. Again, connect it to your curve. And now finding the probability that X is less than 820 basically translates to you having to find this area here. So basically they're asking you to find that yellow area. All right, well, here the command is equal to norm because it's a normal distribution. It's not dot s anymore because it's not standard. So you just go straight to norm dot dist. And if you type norm dot dist, you'll see that the command line will ask you for an x value for the mean and for the standard deviation. So if you, and then also will ask you for cumulative, which is true for Excel, in Excel language. So you have to put in those values. Well, here X is 820. That's what the X value is, the given X value. Uh, my mean is 900, so you type uh, 900. My standard deviation is 50, so you type 50. Uh, and you don't need to memorize this because it's the moment you type norm.dist and open the parentheses, Excel will tell you these are the things you need to type. And then uh, the, what's the natural probability for Excel? It's always the area to the left. So, so therefore it's naturally true here because we're dealing with cumulative. So it's true and it's always true for all the forward commands. So, and that will give you the probability 
that a light bulb will last longer than 820 hours. And if you actually execute that, uh, that will tell you, well, probably that a light bulb will last less than 820 hours. will give you a small probability of 0 0.0548 if I were to round it to four decimal places, which is almost 5%. Which is not a bad thing. That means you know the, the, that means it's definitely going to last more than eight hundred and twenty hours. So so that's how you calculate that question. So let's move on and try another example here with same probability question, type of probability question. So let's look at the, another example from your PowerPoint. Here we're dealing with volumes of uh, soda in, in a quart soda bottles uh, and they're normally distributed. So they're giving me information about this new example. They're telling me that my average is 32.3 and they're telling me my standard deviation is 1.2. Again, these are all non-standard normal distribution forward problems, meaning the distribution commands. All right, so what is it asking me? It's telling me to find a probability that the volume of a soda in a randomly selected bottle will be less than 35 ounces. So it's asking me to find a probability that X is less than 35 ounces. Let's draw this again. My horizontal axis is X this time. P, I draw the curve. The average is 32.3, it's not zero anymore, so 35 will be to its right. So basically what the question is asking me is to find this yellow probability or the yellow area. That's what I need to find. Okay, well, that's, I'm asking you to find a natural frequency for Excel, so you don't need to worry about any alteration commands, it's just straight up norm.dist command. So I'll just type equal to on Excel norm dot this then you don't need to type S because it's not a standard normal distribution. It will be asking you to type the X value, which in this case is 35. That's the X value. It always comes from there. 35. Then I'll ask you to type the mean. The mean is 32.3 comma. Then I'll ask you to type the standard deviation, which is 1.2. And then cumulative, which is true. And if you execute that command and round your answer to four decimal places, you get 0 0.9878, which is almost 99%. So the probability that a soda can will be less than 35 ounces is 99%. So that's another example. Let's look at one more example here, and then we'll move on to the uh, reverse question. Now here, uh, instead of asking you to find a probability that you have a less than some value, uh, I'm going to ask you to give me the probability between two values. So I'm asking you here basically to find a probability that my x is between 5.48 and uh, 5.82. And I have to give you the mean, let's say the mean is 5.67 and the standard deviation is 0 0.07. So with the standard, with the non-standard normal distribution, I have to provide you with the mean and the standard deviation, otherwise you won't be able to do it because the command requires you to type that. Now, this is, let me draw this. This is a strip area I'm asking you to find. So your horizontal axis is X. Vertical axis is P. Here's my normal distribution. The center is 5.67. So they're asking me to find the probability between, or the area between 5.48 X value and 5.82 X value. So basically they want me to find the in-between probability. They want me to find that area right there in yellow. All right, so every time they're asking you to find a probability of a strip in the non-standard normal distribution, it's the same thing as the standard one. It's always the norm dot dist of the top number minus the norm dot dist of the bottom number. Every time they're asking you to find the area of a strip or the probability of a strip, and that's a strip uh, in the middle, then or at any place, uh, that strip could be, let me just draw it here on the side, that strip doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be down here somewhere, 
or it could be up here somewhere as long as you have a strip. So the probability of finding a strip is always the norm dot this to the top number minus norm dot this to the bottom number. Norm dot this to the top number minus the norm dot this to the bottom number. Norm dot this to the top number minus the norm dot this to the bottom number. So this will just be norm dot this of the top x value, which is 5.82, but that's not all you have to type. Unfortunately, you have to type all this other things too. And then you do minus norm dot this to the bottom number. And then again, type the mean and the standard deviation every time. And if you press enter and round your answer to four decimal places, you get 4.9806, which is almost 98% but this is the preferred way of writing the answer with four decimal places. Very good. So I've given you three different examples of the, uh, of the forward problem for the non-standard normal distribution. Now let's go and do the backwards of the reverse problem, the inverse problem. All right, so here I'm reversing the question on you instead of giving you an X and asking you to find P, now I'm giving you P and I'm asking you to find X and here's an example so let's say I'll take an SAT example here uh, I'll say that uh, suppose the verbal SAT scores are normally distributed with a mean of 520 uh, and the standard deviation of 70 so that information is given to me and they're asking me to find uh, the score that will put someone in the 90th percentile of all the SAT scores. So basically given all this example, given the mean and the standard deviation, find uh, P90 or the 90th percentile. All right, well, let's see what that means because the first time we're doing this, so X, P, let me draw the normal distribution. Okay, so P90, which is the 90th percentile, which is the bottom 90%, will be somewhere there. So that's P90. And uh, that just means that the bottom area is 90%. So all the yellow is 90%. All the way, all the way, forever. Right? So that yellow area is uh, 90%. And that's what P90 is. You know, I could have asked you the same question and say, find the SAT score that will put you, I mean, the same, instead of saying find P90, which is, I think, a much nicer way of saying it, because it's pretty compact, I could ask you the same question by saying find the SAT score, <clears throat> SAT verbal score that will put you in the top 10%. I could ask you that which would have told you that we're talking about P90, it would have meant the same thing. But remember, even if I say top 10%, when you're writing the command for Excel, remember what Excel always likes is the area to the left, so you can't use this 10%. You have to use 90% if you want to find that value there, that red value. If you want to find this red value, you have to use the probability on the left, not on the right. It doesn't matter which one is given. So if I've given you the 90%, just go with it. If I've given you 10%, then you have to remember, you have to use the area to the left. You have to use the 90%, not 10%. So your command here will then be equals norm, because the normal distribution, no S, so dot inverse, because it's the inverse problem, comma, and then here you have to write what Excel likes. So you have to write the area to the left of the value you're trying to find, which is 90%, so you write 0.9. And then you'll see that Excel is also asking you for the mean, which is being given to you, 520. And Excel is also asking you for the standard deviation, which is 70. And then that's all you need to, you don't need to type true or anything at this point. And that will give you, and then press enter and round it to uh, the nearest whole number, you get 610. So that's the SAT score that will put you in the top 10% or uh, the 90th percentile is 610. So you basically, the way professionally or mathematically, the way you'd write the answer, you'd say X is equal to P90 equals to 610. I mean, that's how they write the answer. So, and this is rounded to the nearest whole number. The actual, the actual answer that Excel produced was actually 609.7086096. But I asked you to round it to the nearest whole number, 
so it'll be easier for us for you to submit that answer on canvas and for canvas to be able to grade you canvas doesn't like decimals much so if i ask you to round your answer to the nearest whole number make sure you don't write 609 and you write 610 because that seven is greater than five i hope you remember your round off rules great let's try another example here uh let's see this time we're going to do a gre example now let's say the average gre score let's say the average gre score um is given and it's 150 and the standard deviation for GRE is and I'm writing the notation with the subscript so you know what they represent so the standard deviation for the GRE is 9 so that information is given and it has to be given because this is a non-standard normal distribution problem and that's another way you can figure out the moment you see they're giving you the meaning and the standard deviation that should tell you you're dealing with a non-standard normal distribution and what they're asking you is to figure out the GRE score that will put you in the top 1% of all grad applications. So they want you to find the GRE score that will put you in the top uh, 1% of all applicants. So if I were to draw this for you, here's the horizontal axis, it's X, it's non-standard. The vertical axis remains as always the probability axis. I draw the normal distribution picture. And uh, if I want to portray what it is they're asking you to figure out is they want you to find that X value that we don't know, given that the area above it is all the way. So given that area is 1%, so it's 0 0.01, right? So. So this area here is 1%, 0.01. And I want you to find that X value that I'll give you that. Now you notice here, they haven't given you the, uh, the natural probability for Excel because natural probability for Excel is the left side probability. So they haven't given you that. Well, remind you that the middle is 150 at this point, the average. And uh, for me to be able to find the X value that they're asking me for, I have to use equals to norm dot inverse command. And here it says probability. Now, what are we going to write for the probability here? Well, then you have to write the mean and the standard deviation. That's easy. The mean is nine, 150 and standard deviation is 9. And you don't have to type anything else. But what do you type for the probability here? Do you type 1.01? No, you don't. Remember? Excel's natural default probability is how much is on the left, not how much is on the right. So you can't write 0.01 here. You have to write 0.99. That's right. Because if, if the top is 1% and the whole thing is 100%, then therefore 99% is to the left. So basically finding the uh, GRE score that will put you in the top 1% means the same as asking you to find the 99th percentile. It'd be the same thing. So instead of saying all this, I could have just said find the 99 percentile and I would have given you that information and that would have been enough. I didn't have to give you all this verbiage here. So that's why you have to use 0.99. You can't use 0.01. And if you do that, you get uh, 170.9371309. But I'm probably going to ask you to round this to the nearest whole number, so it'll be 171. And that's what you would type. And that concludes our uh, examples for the inverse problem. Thank you.